First, we're going to start with the advantages of pulse wave Doppler. When they ask you, what's the advantage of pulse wave Doppler over continuous wave Doppler? You're going to look for these options here. This is the first one, range resolution. What is range resolution? So range resolution is the same thing as range specificity in which you can sample an area at a certain depth. When you place that pulse wave Doppler or the sample volume or the sample gate, you place it in an area and you're only getting velocities right at that sample gate, that little gap. Continuous wave Doppler doesn't have that advantage. When you run continuous wave Doppler, you're getting velocities all the way up and down that sector. First, you're gonna write range resolution is the first advantage that pulse wave Doppler has over continuous wave Doppler. Then you could also put that pulse wave Doppler has range specificity and it has freedom from range ambiguity artifacts. And this right here is a good example of range ambiguity artifacts. This is a transesophageal echo. And what they're doing is they're checking the inflow through the mitral valve with continuous wave Doppler. What you get with continuous wave Doppler is range ambiguity. If you look at all these other waveforms that are planted inside the spectral waveform, you're getting information from all the way up and down the cursor instead of just the sample gate. This is the E wave, this is the A wave, but we're getting all this information right here that's really not necessary for what we're trying to look at. Yeah, you're getting velocities from all the different areas of your continuous wave Doppler, but you don't get that with pulse wave Doppler. So you get freedom from range ambiguity artifacts. Another thing that's cool about pulse wave Doppler is you're going to get a high axial resolution as a result of a wide bandwidth, which is why pulse wave Doppler requires broadband. And these here, these all kind of go with each other. A low quality factor, when I was first learning physics, this was the hardest thing for me to remember. When you say a low quality factor, all you're talking about is the length of the pulse. And a low quality factor means the pulse is short, which is why you get really good axial resolution. When you associate pulse wave Doppler, you're going to associate it with a backing material, which is why your quality factor is low. A backing layer will shorten the pulse, which reduces the ringing, which creates mm -hmm. a low quality factor by shortening the pulse, thus giving us good axial resolution. Mm -hmm. Here's a cool thing about, and this is something I was never told when I was learning physics. I don't think many people know about it. But the reason why we get really good axial resolution with pulse wave Doppler is because like I said, you get really good range resolution. Well, range resolution is part of LARD, longitudinal mm. axial range radial depth. You're able to get good sample volume at certain depths. Now we'll say mm. the advantages of continuous wave Doppler. This is why we use continuous wave Doppler over pulse wave. The first advantage of continuous wave Doppler over pulse wave Doppler is that you can measure an accurate peak velocity which is why you never see aliasing with continuous wave Doppler. That's a huge advantage of continuous wave Doppler over pulse wave Doppler. Pulse wave Doppler is highly subjected to aliasing. Another advantage would be that exposure to thermal heating is less with continuous wave Doppler versus when you use pulse wave Doppler because pulse wave Doppler uses a high thermal heating and subjects the patient to thermal heating. Another advantage of continuous wave Doppler is it uses two elements. Two elements means that you can fire 100% of the time, which is why continuous wave Doppler has a high duty factor. So your duty factor mm -hmm. is 100%, but it doesn't have a backing layer. And as a result, you're not gonna have very good axial resolution. That would be a disadvantage. A high quality factor means that your pulse length is long. And when the pulse length is long, your axial resolution goes down. Color Doppler. So in this one, the color map is, it shows the red on top and blue on bottom. Here it shows blue on top and red on bottom. Whichever color is on top, it doesn't matter if it's red or blue, the direction of blood flow will be towards the transducer or a positive Doppler shift. It could be blue, red, green, or purple. 
-hmm. And it doesn't really matter which color is on bottom because any color that's on bottom indicates blood flow away from the transducer or a negative Doppler shift. This dark line right here means no Doppler shift. Quickly write this in your notes. This is important. Color Doppler and Power Doppler has a high duty factor. Here's what you need to know about Color Doppler. Color Flow Doppler measures the mean gradients. The reason why we get Color Doppler in the first place is because of this, Ensemble Length. Ensemble Length is the same thing as packets. All this means is the number of pulses per scan line. So the packet size on this line is 4 per line. This one is 3 per scan line. This is how you get your color Doppler. Just like with 2D imaging, we have our line density, right? We have lines that shoot out of the transducer. And these lines are created by 1 pulse per line. That's a board question. How many pulses are needed to create one line? And it's just one. One pulse. That's all you need. And that's the same thing with the packets. So the packets, just like how we get our 2D image with these lines, we add ensemble length or packets to create the color Doppler. The packet size on this left side is high. We have a high ensemble length. This is a low ensemble length. Okay, so the problem with packets is that the more you have per scan line, the more reduced your temporal resolution. So if you're looking at this image versus this image, or this scan line versus this scan line, which one has the best temporal resolution? The more packets you have per scan line, the worse your temporal resolution. Temporal resolution and frame rate are used interchangeably. The advantages of packets or ensemble lengths is that you get accurate velocities and it's sensitive to lower velocities. What's going on here? What's wrong with this image here? What this is, is color aliasing, which is the result of your scale, your PRF, Nyquist limit, and wall filter all turned down too low. The way you make this image here look like this image here is you increase your PRF, your scale, your Nyquist limit, and your wall filter. This image also represents aliasing, and in order to make this image look like this image, you increase your PRF, your Nyquist limit, your wall filter, and your scale. But when you adjust your scale, you're adjusting your PRF, Nyquist limit, and even your wall filter. How do you make image A look like image B? Mm -hmm. And your first thought is to go for the PRF or scale because that's embedded in your head from day one. This patient has a color Doppler mirror artifact. In this first image, mm -hmm. image A shows color Doppler in the true subclavian artery and in the color mirror Doppler artifact. When you look at the scales, they're the same. Now, there's two options or two things you can do at this point. You can either change your angle to make it look like this, or you can decrease your gain. So color gain is kind of a tricky setting because if you turn it up too high, you get this confetti-like speckle throughout your color box. So your color box can be filled with color speckle or confetti. And if you get a question that says, how do you make this image look like this image? Or sometimes it won't show you a picture, it'll just say, how do you get rid of color confetti? How do you get rid of confetti? And you're just gonna think to yourself, confetti is related to color gain. What you're gonna wanna do is turn down your color gain to make it look like this. Mm -hmm. It's too high here, yeah. And anytime you wanna look at color flow in the pulmonary veins, you just up your color gain and you'll be able to see blood flow there. And that applies to when you see regurgitation that looks more moderate, but you're only getting like mild. You can up your color gain to show that regurgitation. That'll help you in the field. And then this one, this shows a really good example of color confetti. The color gain is just turned up too high. So you just turn it down. Here, image A, the color gain is too high. You got that color confetti. It looks like there's a big party going on. And then in image B, it's turned down way too low. So here it's too high, too low. What you want is a good happy medium in between to where it shows color Doppler flowing in that vessel. If they asked you, how would you fix this image? Would it be mm -hmm. A, decrease your scale, 
we decrease your frequency c decrease your color gain or d decrease your wall filter you would decrease your gain to eliminate all this unnecessary color in the tissue then they could ask you how would you fix this image a increase color gain b increase wall filter c increase frequency or d increase depth if so of those four options you would say increase wall filter mm -hmm. because when you increase wall filter you're going to eliminate these ghosting artifacts and let's say that this random picture shows up as one of your questions and you see two vessels one on top one on bottom mm -hmm. you have your color box here but look there's no color doppler in the artery and it mm -hmm. looks like there's aliasing in the vein how do you fix this image now keep in mind there's no color doppler in the artery there is color doppler in the vein but there's aliasing automatically you're thinking i need to fix the aliasing in the vein do we have to fix the aliasing in the vein does that really matter what's no. the problem what's the main problem in this image the artery yes a lot of people will look at this image and go, oh, there's aliasing in the vein. Let's fix that. How are we going to fix that? We're going to increase the PRF scale, Nyquist limit, and lower the frequency, right? But who cares about the vein? Because if you increase all that stuff, if you increase your PRF and scale, that doesn't fix the color doppler in the artery. So here's a couple of things that you can do. If you want to fix the aliasing, you can do that. You can do that by increasing your PRF and scale and all that. And then you reach for the color gain to fill in this. How do you fix the image below? Increase PRF, decrease scale, increase color gain, or D, decrease frequency. Increase. Yeah, so if you had these four options, you would most likely choose option C because that would put color doppler in the artery. Because who mm -hmm. gives a crap if there's aliasing in the vein? When you get weird questions like that, they will throw in stuff to distract you because they will know that you're looking for aliasing and your first thought is, oh, I have to fix the aliasing. But if it looks like a vein, who cares? <laughs> If they didn't have increased color gain that said decrease color gain, and let's say this is this said decreased PRF. Now, which option would you choose? Very good. You would decrease PRF. That would obviously make this more aliased here. And in the real world, this would never happen. Mm -hmm. You would never have aliasing in the vein and no color doppler in the artery unless this was obstructed but really that wouldn't happen in the real world